In the previous video, I mentioned that components are reusable. So you can create a component that returns any HTML you want to and include it in any part of your application. For example, let's say we need to reuse this greet component. All you have to do is include the greet tag as many times as you want to. In that component, if I duplicate it twice, save the file and take a look at the browser, you can see Hello Vishwas displayed three times. Although we are reusing the greet component, duplicating it three times like we have done here isn't really helpful, is it? What would be great is if we could pass in the name of the person we want to greet. That way, reusing the same component, we could greet three different people instead of greeting Vishwas three times. That is where component props come into picture. Props are custom attributes you can register on a component which allow the component content to be dynamic. Let's understand how props work in this video. Our intention here is to pass a name from the app component to the greet component and render that name in the browser. To specify props for a component, we add custom attributes. To specify a name prop, we simply add the name attribute. To the name attribute, we assign the value. Let's go with the name Bruce. Similarly, let's add the attribute on the other two components as well. Name is equal to Clark. Name is equal to Diana. All right, we are sending some data to the greet component. But how do we retrieve the value in the greet component? That is a quick two-step process. The first step, we specify an option called props on the default export of the greet component. Props, short for properties, is an array of all the data properties or custom attributes that the component will accept from the parent component. In our case, app component is the parent component and greet is the child component. The prop this greet component will accept is the name prop, which we can specify in the array. The second step is to bind this name prop to the template like you would bind a normal data property. So instead of Vishwas, use mustache syntax and bind to the template name. If you now take a look at the browser, you should be able to see Hello Bruce, Hello Clark and Hello Diana. Each time, name is dynamically controlled by this name prop. Now I have decided to call it name because it signifies a name, but you can call this prop whatever you want to. It could be message, username or anything you wish to, but make sure the props array as well as the binding reflect that. Hopefully, the reusability of components makes much more sense now that we understand props. We can define a template and pass in the appropriate data that we want the component to use. Let's add another prop to make sure we get a good understanding of how this works. I'm going to add a second attribute called hero name and assign the appropriate values. Hero name is equal to Batman. Hero name is equal to Superman. And finally, Wonder Woman. In the greet component, hello, name, followed by, also known as, within mustache syntax, hero name. And let's also add this to the props array. Now, if we take a look at the browser, you can see that the output is what we expect it to be. At the moment, in our app component, we are passing in static values as props. But we can also assign dynamic values to props using the vbind directive. That is, we can bind data properties or computed properties to props on a component. Let me create two data properties. So data, which is a function which returns an object, and we define name which is Vishwas, 
and channel as code evolution. Make a copy of this grid component and assign name is equal to name and hero name is equal to channel. But this time we use the vbind directive shorthand syntax. So colon name is equal to name and colon hero name is equal to channel. Now name refers to the name data property and channel refers to the channel data property. Take a look at the browser. And we have Hello Vishwas, also known as Code Evolution. Our dynamic props work as expected. Now I just want to add a small note here with respect to naming conventions. Although camel case does work here, like you see here in the case of hero name prop, people do prefer using kebab case for props in the HTML and camel case for the same in JavaScript as that is sort of the naming convention. So you can change hero name to hero hyphen name and the output remains the same. The kebab case to camel case conversion is supported by view so you can choose the convention that you like but make sure you stick to it throughout the project. I wanted to bring this up because I'm pretty sure you are surely going to find camel cased and kebab cased props in many applications. Well then, this is pretty much the basic idea behind props in Vue. When specifying the component, you can include additional attributes. In the component definition, specify the props option with a list of all the custom attributes and then bind them to the template like you would bind a normal data property. In the next video, let's look at a few more details related to props. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.